Today we're going to be talking about the gut-brain connection, specifically connecting it back to anxiety. I said a clinical call with a patient, and I want to dive in just some of the things that we chatted about, and I'm going to just break down some of the top five mechanisms and why and how your gut can create mood issues. And of course, anxiety is a common one. You could put depression, you could put brain fog, you could put OCD in there, right? The same root cause can spiral off different let's say, symptoms based on kind of your genetic predisposition. But it's the same root issues up top. But we'll focus on the anxiety connection. And before we do, please smash the like button. Love to see your comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video, please let me know. All right, so let's dive in. So first, I'll get my little list here. But one of the big things, when we create gut inflammation, that's going to impact absorption. That's going to create gut permeability. It's going to make it harder to absorb the nutrients that our brain needs to function optimally. So we need amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks for our, for our neurotransmitters. So we need to be able to digest and absorb protein. So anything that screws up our ability to make acid and enzymes and absorb optimally, that's going to be a problem. We need healthy fatty acids. Fatty acids and cholesterol provide most of the raw material for our brain. 70 to 80% raw material is, pro, is cholesterol and fat. So if we don't have the building blocks to make the raw material, that can be a problem. So we have the neurotransmitters and the protein. We have the raw material with the fat and the cholesterol, but it's our cell membranes, which are needed for good communication. We need healthy fats for those healthy cell membranes to form that lipid bilayer. And then we also need to be able to manage our blood sugar. If our blood sugar is wonky, that can create problems in the brain, right? Up and down blood sugar can create stress hormones. Those stress hormones can um, activate microglial cells. It just can create a fight or flight response. The more the fight or flight is activated, we're going to use less frontal cortex, greater chance of activating microglial cells, which are immune cells in the brain. 